It's a little bit difficult to describe this direction here, however. There's two ways that we could describe this direction. One way we could describe the direction is by figuring out the angles that the forces are making. Oftentimes we describe directions by figuring out angles. However, the, the method that's used in your homework problem is to break the vector into components. That would also totally describe what direction is pointing in if we break it into components. So let's use that approach. That's probably more useful here. We need to break this force into components. Let me help you with that. We haven't really quite done a question quite like that before. We learned how to break forces into components last semester, in the last semester of physics. And we're going to use basically the same approach, maybe a little bit different here, though. The way to do this is to have two separate triangles, a distance triangle and a force triangle. We want to have a distance triangle and a force triangle. We already drew the distance triangle, and now we can draw the force triangle. Let's keep focusing on the force on charge one. Remember that the hypotenuse always represents the overall vector. So this would represent the overall force on charge one. And then what would be a good symbol for this leg? Uh, Fx. F1x, good. And then this one would be? F1y. Uh, yeah. F1y. This is what we're going to use to break these vectors into components. This is a right triangle. Now we already know what this left side is. What number should I use for this? Five. That's oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, 1.26 times sensor Right. We don't want to confuse the distance yeah. triangle and the force triangle. One thing to keep in mind is that this equation tells you the magnitude of the overall vector. We didn't explain that before. This tells us the magnitude of the overall vector, not the components, which means this gives us the hypotenuse, not the legs. This hypotenuse is 1.26 times 10 to the 10th newtons. And our job is to figure out these two legs. It's always crucial, well, these are forces. Forces are vectors, so we have to put arrows here. Should the arrows on this force be pointing up and to the left or down and to the right? Down and to the right. That's what we figured out with this arrow down here. These forces are being repelled from each other since we're focusing on the force on charge one. We know that it's pointing down and to the right. And that means that we can put arrows on the legs as well. Which way is this leg pointing? Down. And which way is the horizontal leg pointing? To the right. Because the overall vector is down and to the right. This is a part you want, want to highlight in your notes. This is one of the most commonly forgotten aspects. We don't need arrows on the distance triangle, because distances are not vectors. But we do need arrows on the force triangle. And while we're at it, remember I was saying that we should get into the habit of doing the signs before the magnitudes, because the signs are the parts that are easiest to forget. Well, then what's going to be the sign on F1y? Negative. And what's going to be the sign on F1x? Positive. So even before we figure out the magnitudes, we might as well put in those signs so we don't forget about that. That was the reason we needed these arrows. The purpose of the arrows is to figure out the signs. Now, the way that we learned how to break vectors into components last semester was using an angle and trigonometry. But we have a problem here because we don't know either of these two angles. We don't know either of these two angles. However, we have the distance triangle. And it might be apparent that these are similar triangles. The distance triangle and the force triangle are similar. That means all their corresponding angles are the same, because they're both based on this picture here. If we could just find one of these angles, we would know the angle over here. Well, we have enough information here, since we all know all three sides, to use trig to find one of those angles. So we do... Whichever you like. Um, we do sine of theta equals three over five. Which angle is your theta? This one. All right, then we want to erase that symbol over there. So you decided to focus on this bottom right angle. Sine of theta equals 3 over 5. That's right, so Katoa. The sine of theta should be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Good. Are you in degrees mode or radians mode? Degrees. degrees mode. Why did I get a different answer? Then? The sine of 3 over 5. 
Huh, careful, did you write down your equation? Good. So here's our equation. Oh, so it's now we're trying to figure out theta. Yeah, so if you do sine of 3 over 5, you take the inverse, does that work? That sounds right, or close. Let's work that out algebraically. We have to get theta by itself. Well, what do we need to do to the left-hand side to get rid of the sine function? Divide by sine. Now, we can't really divide by it, because it's not being multiplied. Oh. This is not sine times theta. The way to get rid of things is by doing the opposite. What's the opposite of a sine, an arc sine, That's or an inverse sine? But algebra says that if we take the inverse sine of the left-hand side, we're obligated to take the inverse sine of the right-hand side. Now, because these are inverses, the signs cancel on the left-hand side. So it looks like the mistake that we might have made at the beginning was taking the sine of 3 fifths when we really need the inverse sine. Well, why don't we uh, let's call that 37, just to make things simpler. We'll round that off to 37 degrees. That will give us this angle here. This angle is 37 degrees. And that means that the other angle is... We could figure out this angle, but we really only need one. Okay. Okay. Now, to review what we did here, again, the key thing is sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Remember, the way to get things by themselves in algebra is by doing the opposite. Well, the opposite of a sine is an inverse sine. So we have to take an inverse sine of both sides. Now, how big is this angle? 37. Right. That was the trick. We didn't know any of these angles, but if you know all these sides, you can figure out this angle, and then these are similar triangles. That's why we need both a distance triangle and a force triangle to solve this. Well, now we get to review more trick. Um, so then... Call that 7.6 times 10 to the 9th. What are the units on that? Mm. Right. So cross multiplying, we can figure out that the force is the sine of 37 times 1.6 times 10 to the 10th. And then um, we could just do. That would be a good approach, yep. So we're still using Sokotoa. Sine is opposite over adjacent and cosine is well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Um. Looks like you did the last step. Remember that our goal was to break this overall force into components. And it looks like you've done that. And to really break it into components, you need to know both the magnitude and the signs on the components. So you went back and remembered that we'd already figured out the signs. 
So I think, what did we get as the y component? Uh, negative 7.6 times 10 to the Newtons, good. And the x component? Uh, 10 to the 10 Newtons, positive. Positive. And you can see how, after doing, if, if we hadn't already done the signs, after doing all this work, it would be easy yeah. to declare victory too soon and forget about the signs. So the thing that's really important to remember is to put in the signs first. And that comes from putting these arrows in here. So now we've broken this into components. By the way, there are, there are other ways to break these vectors into components. I just think this is, I think this is the best way. But uh, you might see your TA use a different approach. But I think this is the best way here. 